Hey, uh, Christopher here, and wanted to show you something that I've built in Ninja Trader 8. Uh, I always try to, you know, this is for anybody trading FX, or I guess most guys probably on Ninja Trader 8 are trading futures. I know there are some trading FX on it. But anyhow, I like to build stuff that's very visually efficient for, for super easy, just, just, don't think type get in and work these incredible moves that are taking place in the indices markets. So the market since the uh, you know conflict started in Ukraine back at the end of February, uh, I've been hearing stories from prop firms all over how you know they're used to seeing about seven percent of signups. So 93 fail, 93 percent fail prop challenge signups and about 7% pass. The two separate prop firm groups, I know they're down to anywhere from about 1.2 to 1.8% are passing. So for every 100 people that sign up to pass a challenge, maybe one or barely two <laughs> are passing right now. And they've never seen so many longer term traders with live accounts that are six months old or older just getting blown out of the water. Uh, the markets, the FX markets have some some non-standard price activities going on, price action activities. And the indices, you know, up one day, three, four hundred points, down the next day, up the next day, three, four hundred points, down the next day. I mean, they're just, they're going all over the place. And, you know, for a trader that's still trading typical size, but getting two or two and a half times the typical price movement, uh, it's, you know, they're not, they're not, they, they don't have any room for error uh, when there's mistakes. So everybody's been having to adapt to this. So I like the adversity of the markets changing and the challenge. And I built this and it's just been kicking ass, uh, on the future side, you know, whether you're trading gold or oil or indices or heck it's, you know, it works fine on FX too, or a person trading currency futures. So these transition points, this is our trend bias indicator. And, you know, I predominantly trade from about oh, around 8 a.m. Eastern time, uh, U.S. session. I like to trade from about 8 a.m. At 9.30, the stock market opens, the U.S. cash markets, or the stock, you know, activity starts trading. But I like to trade that, you know, I'll trade about an hour and a half, or I'm willing to take setups an hour and a half, especially if there's a news day where there's an 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time news release. So right in that little sweet spot before the cash session open. Cash session means the stock market opens. And then the stock market closes at 4 p.m. Eastern. Now, I don't sit here and want to work futures trades till 4 in the afternoon. I just want to hit some of that activity in the first couple hours and then you know, if there's a Fed news later in the day or, you know, the markets have had big running trends and I might hang with it and, and keep at it a bit. So here's one day pre-market coming in. U.S. session open was right in here. We were already in this uh, uptrend indication. So that means I've, I'm long only, can't look for any shorts uh, with this method and I'm going to show you just how brain dead simple this is. It's very visually efficient and very simple. Not a lot of rules. Do I have green in the, in this, you know, kind of trend bias indication? Yes. Then all I wait for is I wait for one good body size on my green candles that are smooth. And, and I can turn the wicks on or off. I like them off. I just like to see the bodies because I'm paying attention to how, how uh, vertically large the bodies are. So if I'm getting up some partial candlestick bodies, I ignore that. And this is right out of the U.S. session open. So U.S. session had a chance to sell off a bit. Uh, we had some strength coming into the open. And right away, they stepped on the gas pedal. They're running buy programs and in the YM and the NQ and futures. They're running buy programs buying stocks and it was just a, that I'm sorry it was just it was an easy buy and just took off 
there was additional pickup points. So the, the additional pickup point is always the first longer bar. First longer bar, not the very small minuscule body. And it has to be green over green. Now I'm I tend to I tend to hit the first wave and maybe the second wave. I wouldn't be ever entering in here. I don't mind selling multiple waves in a blowout day, but in uptrends, I just get in and can catch that first initial push and then either add to the position some, so thin it down, get some pullbacks, get some secondary entry points, then get in and and catch a little more of the move. Nice clean break and a nice clean transition with our trend bias indicator. And the trend bias indicator is, uh, it's definitely moving averages, but I actually am using a very unique approach and some unique uh, style of mixing the uh, averages together. And, uh, and what I like is I like precision. I like when I'm getting these kickbacks against a downtrend, notice how it stays red the whole time. And we're getting pullbacks and uptrends, stays green the whole time. So I don't want to be going having to go back and forth. Now, when the market's choppy, it will. But I can, I have, basically, I just have two trades. I can trade the pivot points when I'm in those hours of the day that I like to trade, regardless of the instrument. And here we had pushed up and we had pressed through some prior four hour and daily chart resistance. So I pay attention to prior, uh, you know, peaks and, and I guess you could say, you know, high market pivot points on a four hour chart. And we had pressed through that and then rolled over. So that area got rejected. So when we get a flip like that, I'm in. I'm in on the flip. So I, I'm not waiting for a pickup point. And I'm in in the market, you know. It slowly grinded its way down, had a very weak lift, and rolled over. That would be the place for somebody that did not get short here to initiate trade. And there was numerous pickup points. And by here, we're already up to almost 2 o'clock Eastern time. So, I mean, it's like, really, do you want to keep trading? And then that sucker sold off all night long, came into the next day, out of the U.S. Open, they tried to lift it a bit and it rolled right over. So that's my trend bias. It says play short and I got me a, a setup right out of the open and it sold right off into, uh, I know there was some prior support and it went down and challenged that. Then it's not surprising after a gigantic move, there's going to be some consolidation. There was a little bit and then we got to the long side and had a had a nice flip and a bounce into the end part of the day or at least the last part of the day that I would ever trade uh, after catching uh, such a good move right out of the open. So then we get into the next day. Here's the next day. Uh, there was a long right out right after the open and the reason I point this out because of how this is set up it's pretty visually efficient. I can see that the market is creating higher pivot lows, higher pivot lows. So this was pre-market lift. This was post US cash session open. So getting in on the flip to try to catch a little move, that worked. I was in that long that day. I jumped on it right away when we got the flip, right out of the US session open. You can see there's a little area where the market was failing to get above, rolled over, came down, gave a short. I'm like, nah, I'm thinking it's going to hold and lift again, but then we got a pickup point on a failed rally attempt. So now I'm in. And then I add and covered out and got back in and hit it one more time. Later that day after lunch, they came in and held the market, bought it. We get a nice shift point. Nice clean shifts. Nice strong bounce and rally. Pullback, there's our one of our primary entries. First long candle after a pullback. We've got green uptrend bias, long green candle, we're in. Pullback, long green candle, we're in. Pullback, first long green candle, we're in. So I like 
up to the first three are my favorite. I like the first two the most, but if we're really developing a running strong trend, then I'll get in it uh, additional times. Or if it's coming into the beginning of the day and I haven't caught a flip point where the trend is shifting its momentum bias from up upside momentum to downside, then I'll I'll use those as a as a point to initiate my first trade. And then we get late in the afternoon. This is all overnight session. We come into the morning, pre-market, and that time I trade, beautiful short right there. And boy, did that baby just uh, let's see, that was about that was about 8.20 or 8.30-ish uh, Eastern time. So right in that 8 a.m. on time period, I like to trade. So we came up, tested. Let's change the color here. We came up. That was just a freebie. We came up, tested, failed, rejected. We get the flip point. Then right leading up to the U.S. cash session open, we get a long candle, a long red candle, and off she goes. She just dumped all through the U.S. session. I mean, that was just a tremendous sell-off. So anyhow, I just wanted to shoot a quick video and show you in these markets where you're getting gigantic moves, the idea is, is to find efficient areas to enter these moves, place smaller position size than normal, to be safe and then the nice thing is is on these type of moves let me go ahead and get rid of some of these lines uh, I'm gonna just show you something like when you get in a trade like this let's go with uh, yeah let's go with the screen so let's say I do get long on the uh, on the first candle I get my fill price and you just put your stop below the most recent price pivot and see if it'll run away from you and get some legs and keep on going. If, the, if you're still in a trade and it cycles back and lifts and makes a higher high and cycles back, these are great places to add to a trade. Add again. Put another stop in for the entirety of the trade so that if it comes back, you'll still make something on the first piece even after you give back on the second piece. Or if you got in... Uh, let's see, three unit position size here, get in with two. So if you lose this one, you still got three units on, you can still make a little bit of money. But if it does run, now you have five units on and you're, you're riding that trend. So very visually simplistic approach, very tight stop way of trading. And it works on everything. It's working on currencies. It's working on... Um, on indices and commodities just wondrously. I mean, it's wor working fantastic. So matter of fact, I'm using this, I was building this to build something automated on the future side. So I have everything I need now in place to go ahead with these hybrid price candlesticks that are very smoothed out, but very, uh, you know, they combine well with my trend bias indicator. And I have very clear and easy to define pickup points on pullbacks and uptrends or on kickbacks and downtrends. So that's the approach right now. Trade smaller position size and try to catch the bigger moves. That's the more efficient way to trade when this volatility explodes. Or you can trade as much position size as you want, especially when you get something very dialed in. You're, you're trading very efficient entry points where when you do get, let's say you get in and the market's choppy a bit the first hour or so and you get three losing trades where you lose one unit, one unit, one unit. And then on your fourth trade, you catch a move that's like five to one reward to risk. Now you're up two units on the day, even though you had four trades and you lost 75% of them. You know, just, just get the math to be biased in your favor. So typically I would go for about two and a half to one. I've been going for three and a half to four to one on all my entries before I take anything off lately because these moves are so big. So I've really, really got this dialed in on Ninja Trader 8. And I just, since I got it to this mode where it's like, okay, it's done. It's ready 
start moving and putting in rules and get something automated to hit those key hours of the day.